everyone. Thanks for listening to all my presentations. Today I'll be talking about beer potomania. Beer potomania is a condition with a drop in blood sodium secondary to excessive beer consumption. It was first reported in 1971. Beer potomania could come under different names like beer potomania or beer drinkers potomania or beer drinkers hyponatremia or frat boy syndrome. Beer potomania is a problem because beer contains lots of water and only very little sodium. So, if no additional dietary source of sources of sodium, there will be hyponatremia. Example of a situation where an individual could come down with beer is consuming five or more drinks per day. When it comes to beer history of alcoholism is very important. And the history will be found in some patient on admission with hyponatremia. So doctors, patient is diagnosed with hyponatremia. History of alcoholism will be very essential. And that could be a pointer to a different diagnosis entirely, known as beer potomania. It is not that simple to quickly rush into judgment or conclude that the hyponatremia in alcoholic patient is actually due to beer. No. And why that? We have to rule out other possible causes of hyponatremia. Beer has the following characteristics. There is little or no salt content in the beer. And beer has the capability to suppress protein breakdown because of the high level of carbohydrate content. And of course, the alcohol content will also have low sodium and low potassium. Severe reduction in the solute will occur. Therefore, what will get to the kidney will be without a very high solute. The low solute situation will then lead to impaired water clearance and then we'll be dealing with dilutional hyponatremia. We have to rule out diuretics use here and of course other causes of hyponatremia. Usually when it comes to beer potomania, the hyponatremia will be hypotonic hyponatremia and Mostly, it is likely going to be chronic hyponatremia. There will be strong history of beer drinking or binge drinking. And of course, that could be coupled with history of poor dietary intake. It is, of course, going to be characterized for obvious reasons with low sodium in urine and low osmolality in urine. Now, when it comes to clinical features, if you check my channel for causes, signs and symptoms of hyponatremia already published, you're going to get all this. But the only new thing here today is delirium tremens or alcohol intoxication. In acute phase, when the sodium level is below 125 milli equivalent per liter, will be faced with nausea vomiting that could be life-threatening when there is cerebral edema. We may be dealing with malaise, headache, lethargy, confusion, seizures, and coma could set in with or without hyponatremic encephalopathy. Death may occur, and if the individual has escaped death, he or she may be left with permanent neurological damage. Then we need to ask ourselves, does it worry? Drinking a lot of beer and going into such a serious, horrible problems? No. No. When the sodium level is below 115 to 115 milli equivalent per liter, we might be faced with pulmonary edema. 
and later on with respiratory failure, respiratory arrest, and of course, death. Now, there is a room here for, you know, at least comfortability a bit. And that is in the face of chronic hyponatremia. And someone is asking, why do you think you will be comfortable? No, I would rather have chronic hyponatremia at hand than having acute hyponatremia. Why that? There may be no symptom or symptoms at all. So it could be asymptomatic. And even when there are symptoms, the symptoms will be non-specific. And we might have nausea, vomiting, dizziness, fatigue, get disturbances, forgetfulness, or confusion. We could also have lethargy, muscle cramps, less seizures, or coma here, unless there's an acute exacerbation of the aponatremia. I know some people will say, What? You have chronic aponatremia and you think that is better than acute aponatremia? Well, in medical field, yes. But to other people listening to my presentation who are not in medical field, they'll be confused a bit that chronic should be more scary than acute. It's the other way around. There's likelihood of falls in elderly, and that will lead to a lot of fractures. Mortality increases as sodium level decreases. But sodium level below 120 milliequivalent per liter will give us something different, and that is paradoxical mortality decrease. In other words, below 120 milliequivalent per liter, the mortality will decrease paradoxically. Pathogenesis. Antidiuretic hormone, as we've all known, will help with excretion of dilute urine, and by that, maintaining homeostasis without hyponatremia. But excess intake of beer will lead to dilution of the sodium in the ECL, and then we'll be dealing with hyponatremia. Increased water intake more than the degree of excretion will be a big problem. Alcohol has prevented urea formation from proteins because alcohol has a very high level of carbohydrate, less sodium, and less potassium. So, less osmo to the kidney. Alcohol, like we've known, we have very low solute content. Then, the prevention of protein breakdown by the large carbohydrate content of beer is a big problem. On top of that is the poor dietary supplementation of sodium and potassium, and all these will jointly lead to a decreased solute excretion. Therefore, ability to excrete free water becomes limited. Antidiuretic hormone will be suppressed in beer potomania due to excess water reuptake in the collecting tubules of the kidney, causing a pre-exile resist whenever you introduce solute. When it comes to the treatment, you can check my channel for the full presentation on the treatment of hyponatremia. So in addition to what I'm gonna get there, when it comes to beer hypotomania, we have to increase solutes in the diet. If we are faced with chronic aponatremia, there is no need of urgent intervention. I will not forget to leave this here that, please, no rapid correction. And why that? If we correct aponatremia too rapidly, we are going to tilt that patient to central point amyloidosis or osmotic demyelination syndrome. And the patient and the family will not be grateful you know, for that in the end. So with that, I've come to the end of this very presentation. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Remember to share this. And when you subscribe to my channel, you'll be able to get all my presentations immediately they are released. Thank you. I appreciate that.